I have a fully loaded American Beauty lathe ready to ship. Contact me and I'll answer any of your questions. Now here in Billings, Montana, I belong to the Yellowstone Wood Turning Club. And one of our members who is a new wood turner asked me the other day, what tools do I need to get started in wood turning? Well, I'm going to answer that question in this video. In this video, I will cover spindle tools and tools used for cross grain or faceplate turning is broken down by these lists. Okay, now I have a number of tools I'm going to show you. And right now I'm just pretty much going to list those tools that you might need to begin wood turning. What you're looking at here is a spindle roughing gouge. Okay, this is for spindles. And if you talk about this tool, you need to say spindle roughing gouge. It's not a bowl gouge. It's not for cross grain turning only for spindle work and I'll show you later on in the video some examples of turning with this tool. Now the next tool I'm showing you here is a bowl gouge. Bowl gouges are ordinarily larger tools. They have a deep flute. This is the flute right here and it's much deeper than a spindle gouge. One of the reasons for that is it removes sh uh, shavings much more quickly and easily. This particular gouge has a 40 degree nose angle with swept back wings and that's what I use in my shop. Again, I'll show you examples of using this tool later on. Okay, now you're looking at a spindle gouge. It's got a shallow flute this tool is a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. And it's not just for spindle work. You could use this on cross grain work depending on what exactly you're turning and how big that uh, project might be. I'll show you that tool later on. Now it's important that you have some sort of a parting tool. This is an eighth inch parting tool. It's actually got two bevels, one here and one here. And I'll show you how I use that later on in the video. I have a number of scrapers in my shop. This one is a conventional scraper. It has a flat top and it has one bevel. I'll also show you a negative rake scraper and define what that is later on in the video. So the last tool I'm going to show you is a skew chisel. This is a half inch skew chisel and it's got two bevels and ordinarily this is used also just for spindle work takes a little bit more skill using this tool and you have to really practice but I think it's a good tool to have. You may not need to get it right now but later on now answering the question what tools do I start wood turning with? Not an easy question to answer because there's a lot of variations. For example, I have three or four different grinds on bowl gouges of the same size, like a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Uh, I have different grinds on my spindle gouges. So you may need more than just one spindle gouge or one bowl gouge. I've got parting tools um, from very, very narrow. Some of them I've made myself out of a reciprocating saw blade. So I'll give you more information on this as we go along. Now let's take a look at some of these tools specifically and how they're used. 
All right, now for a little bit more secure fixing into my chuck jaws, I've created a little tenon right here. And in this clip, I'm going to highlight a couple parting tools. Bring up my tail stock for a little support. I'm a little bit out of balance here, so I'm going to clean this up with my skew chisel. Now, I'm going to show you this tool right here, and, and there's something uh, there's a little bit of a lesson here. This this is marked an eighth of an inch, but it's five sixty-fourths of an inch or almost four millimeters, where it's marked three millimeters. All right. So anyway, that's a little bit thicker than this one. Let's measure that one just to kind of give us an idea. I need to tell you the truth on these. And this is right at a sixteenth of an inch. All right. And that's not a bad uh, dimension to have. So one is a little thicker. Now, why is that important? Well, if I'm making a little box right here, okay, and I'll rotate this and you can see the grain lining up from the base to the lid all the way around. It's a, it's a pretty good grain alignment. And if I take out more wood from the center right here, when I'm making this connection, the grain doesn't line up as well. So it's important to use a very small or narrow parting tool. Now let me just do a little bit with both of these tools and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this one is right at a sixteenth of an inch. This one is a very strong eighth of an inch. And you can see the difference in that kerf from this one to this one. This is much wider. All right. So let's go ahead and just part this off. And parting off between centers can be a little bit uh, precarious, maybe dangerous. You don't want to get that section you're parting off between the, the wood and the live center. Now as I part this off, I discover that I really do need my tail center up at least for a little while until I get very close to parting it off, and I'll show you that in just a second. And I'm down to about uh, an eighth of an inch or so. I'll take my tail stock away. Now you could probably hear the sound. Okay, it gets to be a little bit high pitched and then all of a sudden it goes dull. And that's how much wood I had to part off. All right, there's the parting tool. Okay, now I had to show you one more thing before I moved on from the spindle tools. This is a beading and parting tool. All right, 
Ordinarily, these are three quarters of an inch wide this way, and it looks like it's the same dimension tall. I often use this for forming a tenon. And it's just that easy. So we just twist the tool on its side at an angle and form that tendon. Let's go a little, little deeper on this. Now again, this is another tool that you shouldn't use in end grain. This is a spindle turning. This is side grain. I'm cutting across the grain this way, not into end grain. That's going to be a problem. Okay, let's find another tool. Alright, now I'm going to show you a couple more important spindle tools. This is a shallow flute spindle gouge. And I sharpened these just now. This is a detail gouge. And I measured the angle and it's a 25 degree angle. And you can see how I'm holding that on the, the piece of wood where that angle is. This one is 40 degrees. And you see the difference in, in where that uh, tool is. Anyway, let's take a look at these, these two tools. Now again, I'm not going to try to give you an in-depth uh, lesson on any of these tools. It's a list. These are tools that I think are important to get as a new wood turner. Now, you can probably get by with this tool, okay? But I've got probably three different grinds on my spindle gouges. Doesn't mean you have to have three spindle gouges. Let's go back to this one here. So I just created a little tenon on that that would fit into some uh, scroll chuck jaws. A little bit bigger. Now yeah, what else can we do with this? We can do a cove. We can do a chamfer. And if we put two chamfers together, we get a V cut. So let's find this this particular detail gouge. It's a detail spindle gouge. Now let's go back to a, a chamfer, which is just a straight cut. So that's simply a straight cut on the end of that little block of wood. Let's do a, a chamfer on the inside and what this tool allows us to do is to, is to uh, develop a much sharper angle down there. I can get in there a little bit uh,
I can create a little bit more narrow chamfer. Whoop. With this tool. All right. Let's move on to the bowl gouge. All right, now the next tool I want to look at is a bowl gouge. It's got a deep flute for ejecting the shavings quickly. This is a 5 8 inch bowl gouge with a 40 degree nose angle and swept back wings. And I have a nice walnut bowl. All right, now I'm going to work on the inside of my bowl. I'm going to true up the rim right here and then level off this surface on the inside. Alright, that's all there is to it. This bowl has been drying for four or five months. It's ready to turn. And I just need to clean up this surface on the inside here. Here is another tool that might be important in your uh, tool kit. This is a negative rake scraper. Well, there's my list of tools, okay? You may have more, you may have less. It all depends on what you turn, partly, what size your lathe is, and a number of other factors, maybe how much money you want to spend. Anyway, there's a good basic list of tools for the new wood turner. Thank you. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to you next time.